What are the four things that Andrew Huberman, the host of the Huberman Lab podcast, says about the latest science when it comes to developing muscle and strength? Right, so Andrew Huberman is a researcher at Stanford University, and he has a phenomenal podcast and YouTube channel called the Huberman Lab, where he's describing all the latest science when it comes to health and performance. Now, in this video, I'm going to quickly summarize for you the four things he talks about when it comes to developing muscle and strength according to the latest science. Plus, at the very end of this video, I'll share with you one more topic that he talks about when it comes to improving your performance. So make sure you stick around for that. Now, the first one is that after a resistance training workout, so a workout where you're trying to develop mass or strength, you should wait at least four hours before getting into cold exposure. With cold exposure, I mean a ice bath, a cold shower, or even a cryotherapy chamber if you happen to have access to one of those. And the reason why you want to wait at least four hours before having some cold exposure after a workout is because after a workout, your body has some inflammation going on. And that inflammation is actually the stimulus that your body is responding to in order to build the muscle and strength. And cold exposure is known to reduce inflammation. Now for this reason, after a workout where you're trying to build the muscle or strength, you don't want to lower the inflammation or lower the stimulus for that muscle and strength development. So wait at least four hours before you have cold exposure after a workout. Now he does mention that it probably doesn't impact your gains too much if you have a cold exposure, you know, close to your workout. But depending on how obsessed you are with your gains and how much you're willing to potentially sacrifice losing on your gains due to the cold exposure, um, you might want to wait even more than four hours or maybe have in your cold exposure in a completely different day. All right, so thing number two is going to be heat exposure after a workout. Now with heat exposure, I'm referring to something like a sauna. So a hot sauna after workout is going to be beneficial for you to want to develop muscle or strength. And that's basically because heat is going to dilate your vascular system and a, you know, a hot sauna is also going to be releasing heat shock proteins and human growth hormone. And those two play their own role when it comes to building muscle and strength. And hey, if you get some value from this video, then why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel right there for more similar videos in the future. The next one is going to be to flex your muscles in between your sets. Now this will reduce your performance. So if you do this in between your sets, you're going to be able to lift less weights and do less repetitions, but it's going to be beneficial for your hypertrophy again, so building the size of the muscle. So if your main goal is to develop the size of your muscle, then you want to be flexing the muscle that you've been working in between your sets. So let's say you're working on chin-ups and want to develop your biceps. What you would do in between your sets when you're resting, you would simply be flexing those biceps, so flexing those guns. And I know it might look silly, you might even feel a bit silly of doing it, but again, it's going to be reducing your performance for your chin-ups. And the last thing is going to be to initiate immediate recovery. As soon as you finish with your workout, what you want to do is to do some deep breathing to get back into that parasympathetic nervous system and out of the fight or flight state which your body is going to be in during and after a workout. And a very simple breathing protocol you can do after workout would be something like the following. Breathe in through your nose, into the belly, as much as you can. Hold it for a while that's comfortable for you. No need to count seconds too much. After that, you exhale through your mouth. So very long and slow exhale. So just let it come out. Don't push it by force. After that, you have a short pause at the end of that. Then you let your breathing come back to normal and then you repeat the same thing. Now he recommended 10 of these deep breaths after a session. That should be enough to initiate your recovery. And just a side note I want to throw in here is that I heard a quite famous and successful psychotherapist say that you need to do at least five minutes of a deep breath before you can actually tap into the parasympathetic nervous system and go you know, into the rest and digest mode. Not something that he mentioned in his podcast, but something I heard from somebody else and I thought that might be um, a valuable information when it comes to initiating immediate recovery and getting back into that parasympathetic nervous system. And I'll throw in a bonus topic that he also mentioned in his podcast, which is palmal cooling in between your sets. Basically, if you cool down your palms with an appropriate temperature in between your sets, you're going to be increasing the amount of volume you can perform. So in his story, there was uh, somebody who was able to do dips, or well, quite, quite many dips, and in between the sets of his dips, they cooled down his palms and he was able to perform significantly more dips in that entire workout than he was without the palmar cooling. Now there's a device called cooling mitt, which is a actual proper machine where you put your hand in this mitt and it's gonna cool it down to a proper temperature. From what I understood, there's not many of these cooling mitt devices available at the moment. So I mentioned that a poor man's version could be to just cool down the palms of your hands with anything that you can find. But what you can do is you can just find something that's cool enough, but not too cold, not too warm, just the appropriate temperature, which is you know probably a little bit hard to find. Um, but you can still get some of the benefits out of 
that version as well. The benefit with the cooling meat is going to be is that the temperature is going to be very appropriate for what it needs to be because if it's too cold you won't really be getting the benefits out of it and if it's too warm well the same thing you won't be getting the optimal benefits from it so therefore you want it to be an appropriate temperature. So if you just hold on to a pack of ice that might be way too cold but what he mentioned you could do instead is that if you have a bottle of water what you do is you fill it with some ice and then just hold on to that in between your sets and the time frame for the polymer cooling in between your sets was around 30 seconds to 2 minutes so definitely worth trying and giving it a go and if you haven't already then I highly recommend for you to have a look at uh, Andrew's podcast the Huberman Lab really valuable information he's offering in his podcast so have a look at that all right so those were the four things that Andrew Huberman talks about the latest science when it comes to developing muscle and strength now that is it for this video guys hope you found it helpful and if you got some value from this video then please go ahead and leave this video a like so I appreciate it and subscribe to your channel for more tips on how to build a warrior body with primal training thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video bye bye